Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 28 April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Albert Einstein. So this quote it is regarding education. So education is one of the favorite topic of UPSC. You can expect main questions and even essay from this education. So you need to prepare with some quotes of education. For example, quotes given by Swami Vivekananda regarding education, Mahatma Gandhi regarding education as well as Albert Einstein. So Albert Einstein says that education is not the learning of facts but the training of the mind to think. So many people they will be having a misconception like so education it is regarding learning the facts. So it is not at all re regarding this uh, learning of facts but it is regarding the training of the mind to think. Okay. So we are training our mind to think in that point of view. So this is about education. So now let us try to see first article. So this article is regarding school education. So why the school education is in use? So due to this COVID-19, so because of global pandemic that led to disruptions in our school education, particularly not only in school education, but in almost all educations like school education, colleges, universities, everything had been closed down due to this global pandemic. And because of this closed down of schools, so many schools they went for online education and some schools also had some hybrid thing that is online plus offline mode. But in despite of many steps were taken by the schools, either government schools or private schools, so now we are facing learning loss. So how can we build this learning gap? Okay, so you have to see what can be the measures that can be taken from the government side and even from the school management side as well. So this article is important from your education which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And this type of questions of course you can expect in your mains. So now let us try to see this article in a great detail. So this article which is talking about school education and learning gap. So due to this COVID-19 pandemic that led to big disruption in the field of school education and in the last 100 years we didn't see this type of disruption of education but due to this COVID-19 pandemic which had a great impact on school education and it would take many more months before the medium and long term impact of school closure is fully comprehended. Okay, so mainly to decrease what is impact that happened in this education. So if you want to bring back that, so it will be taking few more months. We can't say exactly how many months, like two months or six months or one year or some years, which will be taken to mainly fully comprehend that learning loss. So if you're talking about data, which is made released by UNESCO, UNICEF and World Bank, it mainly said that. It mainly came up with a report and the title of that report is the state of global education crisis it is a path to recovery so actually this report released in december 2021 and it mainly said that almost 21 months of pandemic the school in countries around the world they had been closed okay so on average if you see all the countries in the world they went for closing of schools for 21 months that is either fully or partially okay it is a world's average but if you see in case of india so in case of india we had 450 to 480 days of school closure and it is very much high okay and after that also because of entry of this omicron again some schools they had been closed and even parents are not at all ready to send their children or to send their loved ones to the schools because there is a chance of infections for the children so overall in india we went for 570 to 600 days of closure of schools and it is one of the longest school closures in the world so longest school closures in the world which is mainly seen in india it is about 570 to 600 days so if you're talking about why parents are very much reluctant to send their children to school as you all know children they are part of the family and they are part of society 
so therefore whenever there is any case which any case of this covid 19 which is reported in the nearby surroundings of that children means here whenever that children who is going to school means there will be increased risk of transmission in the classes and even if any child who got positive in that class means so there will be also increased risk of transmission to these children and these children they will be carrying that virus to houses so in houses we have our parents we have our grandparents so there is a very very increased risk of transmission once again so because of this your parents are very much reluctant to send their children to school so here however in this two years of this pandemic it mainly proven that children do get this sars coronavirus infection at the same rate as adults but the adverse reaction the children they are very low compared to that of adults okay so as we all know that so even children who are getting positive with this covid 19 so they are not getting much severe symptoms as adults do right so 25 months into this pandemic so sars coronavirus infection is not an immediate concern now so we are mainly focusing on what is the outcome of that infection so because of that infection we went for closure of schools so because of this closure of schools what is the outcome now outcome is there is a learning gap and there is rise of inequalities okay especially in this education as well because the people who are having access to online gadgets for example mobile phones tablet and uh, laptops like that so they will be going for online education but what is the case in case if there is no proper internet availability especially in the northeastern states and some remote areas and what if in the case they are not having proper online gadgets they are out of this online learning right so even i saw number of articles that students uh, especially in this covid 19 period they are addicted to mobiles and internet so now what happened especially some children they use this technology for the good okay and one one child who is uh, belonging to 10th class in hyderabad he used internet and within 10 months of time he learned he learned different programming languages and he created two websites and two applications and he also created some robo like that so in this way here uh, here we can say there is some inequalities which are rising today okay so students who are having this access to this online gadgets they are moving forward and here the students who are mainly belonging to rural areas or remote areas they are out of this education so in this way the learning gap is also very much high in india so here in this way so at this time here as a society we need to stop worrying about the children who get this covid 19 infection when we are send when we are sending them to schools but here we need to focus on how to reduce this learning gap in the children so yes we are facing some challenges okay challenges in this school education so first important challenge here is enrollment okay enrollment so for for example if we are going for if we are going for opening of schools already we saw that from last uh, November onwards yes schools had been open and we are sending our children to their schools so here one important challenge that we are facing in school education is learning loss so learning loss it is uh, not at all we need to focus on how to ensure this learning recovery but once when we went for this reopening of schools we need to know whether the returning of children to school is happening or not so here in this context education departments in every state they need to ensure that every school in each and every district they need to ensure that no child has dropped so we should ensure that no child has been dropped that is dropping rate or dropped out rate should be zero and here whoever the children who are eligible they should be enrolled in the schools so for this we need to take some special attention so special attention should be taken for the enrollment of all children especially girls who are mainly as, uh, belonging to poor category or marginalized society or backward community both in rural and as well as urban areas so that is uh, both rural and urban slum dwellers and even children who are eligible for admission in nursery or class 1 and 2 they need to have some special attention okay so here we need to take some steps to tackle how to increase this enrollment ratio 
and second important challenge here is learning loss so as you all know learning loss had been evident so how can we recover from this learning gap okay so in this context your state government need to take some special focus and we need to focus on learning level of children and we need to come up with special strategies to recover their learning and we need to come up with consolidating of curriculum and increasing of teaching time as well and third important challenge is here we need to reassess the challenges in our education system and we need to follow recommendations as per national education policy 2020 so in the context of this pandemic related challenges here so we need to come up with some special strategies and we need to implement it in an accelerated manner as well okay for all these things we need government investment so whatever the investment that we can see that is spending by our government especially education is very very low so there is a need of increasing of budgetary allocation in education and next important challenge here is so students are also facing some mental health issues during this pandemic so here we need to also focus on mental health services and children should be given some counseling sessions as well right and apart from that we need to ensure their government which is providing some regular services like school health mental school health and as well as mental health and even health checkup in the school children so that will be very much beneficial so apart from that as you all know government schools they will be providing a food okay that is meals under this midday meal program so because of this closure of schools so this midday meal program had been stopped so because of this midday meal program which mainly stopped that had some negative impact on the nutrition status of children as well so because of this now here government should have some special focus on providing some nutritious food to children now right and these are the some important challenges that we need to address and whenever we are addressing this challenge then that will be helpful for bringing back the children to school and education will be back on track and we can focus on how to reduce this learning recovery and in this context both parents government community schools they need to work together and it is a moral and social responsibility towards the future of this nation so because today's children are tomorrow's citizens right so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic and this topic is very important it is about hydrogen so energy dependence through hydrogen so if you're talking about hydrogen we are having different types of hydrogen like green hydrogen blue hydrogen gray hydrogen and as well as green hydrogen so here we are talking about green hydrogen so why green hydrogen because we are mainly focusing to attain carbon neutrality and carbon neutrality we need to attain by 2070 so this is the thing which mainly announced by our prime minister in conference of parties 26 which mainly held recently in glasgow so now let us try to talk about this topic it is important from here gs paper three point of view comes under science and technology so we are talking about green hydrogen we are preparing this green hydrogen by hydrolysis a method that is breaking of hydrogen sorry breaking of water so that is h2o molecule we are breaking and we are preparing green hydrogen from this electrolysis process so now let us try to see what is the central theme so central theme of this article says that so this hydrogen can help lay foundation of a new india and this new india which mainly aims to be a global climate leader so when we want to be a global climate leader so we need to go for transition from this non-renewable energy towards this renewable energy so one of this renewable energy here is we can move towards this green hydrogen right so now let us try to see what is the context so recently recently government of india which mainly released india's green hydrogen policy okay india's green hydrogen policy which mainly released on february 17 2002 2022 okay so recently in february our government of india which released this green, india's green hydrogen policy and this in india's green hydrogen policy which mainly addressed several critical challenges regarding this open access open access waiver of interstate transmission charges banking related things and time bound clearances etc so these are the some important things which mainly 
present in this green hydrogen policy which recently released by government and in this way this is the one of the important and welcome step for the boosting of india's energy transition from non renewable energy towards renewable energy sources so here if you are talking about per capita energy consumption so per capita means nothing but total population okay total uh, we are mainly saying that per head so per head how much amount of energy which is consumed here is it is about one third of global average okay and it is like one twelfth of us okay so here here what happened so uh, one person in us which who mainly uses energy that is equal to 12 persons who are using that energy in india that means per capita usage of this energy is very very low in india when we are comparing with the global average and even with usa so because of this there is a very high chances of increasing of growth and economic prosperity okay prosperity in india so as you all know that at present global crisis which is mainly seen due to this russia ukraine crisis so because of this russia ukraine conflict that led to volatility of price of crude oil in the market so now because of this here we have a chance and opportunity to move towards this hydrogen so it will be helpful for proper storage and even we can go for a long haul transportation of this hydrogen and even this will be helpful for decarbonization of our industrial sector so these are some advantages of using of this hydrogen okay so here two important prominent fields in long run that will be hydrogen as well as electricity okay so if you are using this hydrogen that will be complementing to accelerate renewables into this india's clean energy transition so in this way when we are moving towards this hydrogen this will be also helpful to support our plan to achieve 500 gigawatts of renewable energy and the target here is uh, 2030 year so here i can say this hydrogen it will be a game changer so now let us try to understand how this hydrogen will be a game changer so as you all know hydrogen will play an important role in the decarbonization of our india's transport sector so in india in india's transport sector as of now we are using fossil fuel like petrol and as well as diesel so when we are using this fossil fuels like petrol and diesel that will be releasing greenhouse gases into atmosphere that will lead to global warming etc so here we are mainly focusing on decreasing of global climate according to this paris climate deal so when we want to decrease this uh, greenhouse emissions we need to use renewable energy so in this context so hydrogen will will play an important role in the decarbonization of our india's transport sector so we are having different advantages of this fuel cell vehicles over this battery electric vehicles so as we all know that there are several incidents are happening regarding this electric vehicles like for example uh, battery battery incidents are happening so because of this here people they are very much reluctant to use this electric vehicles now there is some fear in the people to use this electric vehicles right and as you all know that this fuel cell vehicles they are faster in fueling and even they will be having long range long driving range okay so this will be very much ideal for the transportation right so in the industrial segment this hydrogen can be decarbonizing and hard to abate sectors also in some sectors like iron steel and aluminium and copper industries also we can use this hydrogen as a decarbonizing okay so if you're talking about challenges yes every coin will be having a two sides so on one side we will be talking about advantages and one side we need to talk about challenges so if we're talking about challenges so there is increasing of electricity demand so day by day what happened people's living standard will be increasing so because of uh, improving of standard of living of people there will be increasing demand for the electronic goods for example tvs fans acs okay washing machines like that so because of this what happened whenever there is increasing the demand and when we are getting more electronic items into our home that will lead to increasing the demand for electricity so because of increasing the demand of electricity we need to go for increase the production of electricity right so when we want to go for manufacturing of hydrogen here 
so especially in the water scarcity reg regions it is a very very big challenge because for the production of 1 kg of hydrogen by electrolysis method it will requires 9 liters of water so especially in this water scarce areas we can't go for production of this hydrogen so this is one important cause of concern right and if you are talking about hydrogen which will be helpful in especially fulfilling of three e's of india's energy roadmap so first one is energy security second one is energy sustainability next one is energy access and we need to focus on one more e that is economic opportunity as well so we need to now focus on this economic opportunity as well so in this context author mainly gives a five step strategy that we can follow so first one is we need to create initial demand so first we need to create demand and we need to mandate okay we need to mandate some industries such as refining fertilizers okay they need to take some adequate incentives to move towards this using of hydrogen and next one is industries which are manufacturing low emission hydrogen products for example like green steel green cement they need to be intensified and next one is we need to go for blending of uh, natural gas with hydrogen so it will be a book boost and next one is we need to promote fuel cell electric vehicles as well and we need to come up with the concept of carbon tariffs okay so in this way we can achieve our target okay and even on supply side also so we need to come up with a five step strategy first one is we need to invest in the research and development and we need to come up with this uh, certain scheme that is regarding a sustainable alternative towards affordable transportation so here we need to use biogas here so this biogas need to be converted into hydrogen and next one is we need to commercialize and we need to scale up nascent technologies okay and we need to go for affording finances and as well as some incentives uh, under this private sector lending scheme and for this production of this green hydrogen okay and we need to go for two dominant factors actually two dominant factors will be there for production of this uh, green hydrogen first one is renewable energy tariffs and as well as electroly uh, electrolyzer cost so we need to decrease the cost of this uh, infrastructure as well right so what is the significance when we move towards this hydrogen so as you all know that hydrogen can play an important role in transforming india's energy ecosystem right and and india can become from importing country energy importing country towards energy exporting country in the future so if you are focusing on green hydrogen now for example to countries like japan south korea etc and hydrogen with hydrogen india could lead the world in achieving paris climate deal targets okay and next one here is even in cop 26 our prime minister he came up with one slogan that is panchamrit so ambitious target it is to attain carbon neutrality by 2070 we can achieve that so hydrogen will certainly play an important role in india's net zero ambition as well and even it will help for making india atmanirbhar in energy sector as well so this is about gist of this article and now let us try to see palm oil export ban of indonesia so indonesia announced that it is going to ban this palm oil export so this article is important from our economy point of view which mainly comes under gs paper 3 so now let us try to talk about this article in a great detail so if you see context it mainly says that indonesia it is a world's biggest producer and world's biggest exporter and consumer of this palm oil and indonesia which mainly announced that it is going to ban all exports of commodity and as well as raw materials of this palm from this april 28th so why because there are some shortages which are mainly facing by this indonesia so because of this shortage there is skyrocketing of price of this palm oil in indonesia so because of this president of indonesia he announced that they are going to ban export of this palm oil okay so why because of consequence of ongoing russia ukraine crisis so if you see details it mainly says that because of short supply of other vegetable oils okay um, there is a lowering of uh, exports uh, which are mainly seen okay because of uh, there is short of supply that is seen regarding other vegetable oils so that led to increase in the demand for this uh, palm oil in indonesia so because of this they are facing some shortage so because of this shortage they are going for hoarding and reselling that led to increasing of prices of palm oil in indonesia 
so even because of this global food inflation which also uh, which also can be linked with the pandemic and russia ukraine crisis so the global crude oil price of this palm oil has also been significantly raised so to control the prices of this palm oil now indonesian government which mainly introduced price caps on this palm oil and they also came up with some uh, some uh, some conditions okay some conditions regarding hoarding and as well as reselling so because of all these things producers have been discouraged from making more oil that led to acute shortages of cooking oil in indonesia so this is the one important reason why indonesia took this decision so if you are talking about facts regarding this palm oil so palm oil is the world's most widely used vegetable oil and the global production here is about 73 million tons this is according to data of united states department of agriculture so out of this oil which is mainly produced from this indonesia and as well as malaysia so this palm oil industry is also facing number of criticism like so it is like unsustainable production practices they are going for deforestation and they are also exploiting the labor practices so these are the important uh, some criticism which are mainly faced by this palm oil cultivation so apart from that indonesia and malaysia they together account for almost 90 percentage of this global oil that is global palm oil production and they will be producing about 43 metric tons in this 2021 so according to data it mainly says that palm oil will be like 40 percentage of global supply for the four most widely used edible oils so edible oils which mainly we use will be the palm oil soybean oil rapeseed oil and as well as sunflower oil so out of this 40 percentage of this global supply will be like palm oil and indonesia which is responsible for 60 percentage of global supply of this palm oil so with this decision what will be the impact that is seen on india so india it is the biggest importer of this palm oil okay and india makes up 40 percentage of this vegetable consumption so so if you see 100 liters of oil we are consuming in india so out of this 40 liters that is like palm oil that we are consuming here okay so what happened recently our central government also came up with a uh, one policy or plan to go for boosting of india's palm oil production as well right so if you see here because of this russia ukraine crisis that led to decrease supply of the sunflower oil from this uh, countries so because of this there is increase in demand for this palm oil but on another side also palm oil exports are going to be cut so there will be like again food inflation is seen food inflation is seen why because for preparing any food we need oil so if, because of shortage of oil what happen so the prices will be increased for each and everything and further we need to face wholesale price induction as well as a consumer price inflation in the market and now let's try to say next topic it is regarding states not passing on fuel duty cut to people so this article which is talking about fuel duty so this article is important from your economy point of view so actually this is not a new topic it is a topic that we have to continuously follow so actually what happened our central government came up with the decreasing of taxes on this crude oil right so here prime minister narendra modi he said that fuel prices were too high in some states which are mainly ruled by bjp rivals because these states are not passing the benefits of center's excise duty cut to the people so center came up with the cutting of excise duty on this fuels like petrol and as well as diesel such that why because so that will be helpful to decrease the price of this petrol and diesel in the market so whenever there is a cost of this oil which is mainly increased that is petrol and diesel is increased means overall transportation cost will be increased logistic cost will be increased so final goods and services cost will be increased so mainly to increase the demand in the market so this is a decision which is mainly taken by central government to decrease excise duty but now prime minister says that so even though from center side they decrease or they cut this excise duty and that is not that is not passing the benefits to the people so this is thing which mainly said by our prime minister so if you see details he mainly says that these states they should bring in immediate remedial measures to stop this injustice because of this covid 19 situation we are facing economic crisis right so mainly 
to come out of this economic crisis and to decrease the impact of this economic crisis so here central came up with cutting of this excise duty so here in this context our prime minister also says that so whenever this cutting of this excise duty which is not passed to the people means it also harms other neighboring states as well for example states like karnataka and gujarat they undertook some measures regarding tax reduction for the welfare of the people even though they are having some revenue losses but other states like for example maharashtra west bengal telangana andhra pradesh tamil nadu kerala jharkhand they did not do okay so this is the thing which mainly said and our prime minister he says that yes there is a need of proper center state cooperation okay it is a need of however now in this critical situation and if you see at the global scenario the strength of india's economy and the coordination between center and state it is also very very important for proper economic revival so this is about this topic and you have to know what is excise duty already we discussed that a number of times and now let us try to see next topic that is sslv that is small satellite launch vehicle so small satellite launch vehicle development flights likely in 2022 so this article which is talking about sslv d1 sslv d2 and sslv d3 so now let us try to see this topic so this is important from your science and technology which mainly comes under gs paper 3 so now let us try to see context so if you see context it mainly says that the isro that is india space research organization so this isro which is hoping to have three development flights okay three development flights that are planned in this year 2022 so if you see some details it mainly says that three development flights have been approved okay 2022 it is our target for all of three that is sslv d1 d2 and d3 so if you see some facts regarding this sslv so sslv that is small satellite launch vehicle it is a three stage rocket and the height here is 24 meters and it can lift the weight of about 120 tons and three stages they are solid propulsion stages so if you see some facts regarding this small satellite vehicle launch vehicle so it is intended to cater to market for the launch of small satellites into low earth orbits so where it can transfer or launch its satellites in low earth orbits and it can carry weighing up to 500 kg to low earth orbit and it is a smallest vehicle okay at 110 ton mass at isro and it take only 72 hours to integrate and only six people will be required to do this job okay and the cost is also very less and it will be helpful for launching of multiple micro satellites okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding birth and death reporting to be automated so this article which is talking about civil registration system so this civil registration system is very very important in any country because it will records the number of birth and as well as number of deaths okay and this civil registration system which is going to be linked to national population register because here as you all know there are number of elderly people okay senior citizens they are getting pensions okay in the different states we are having different schemes so whenever this uh, elderly people they will be uh, like uh, if the death of this people is happening means sometimes there will be some mal practices that is seen and here here the here the officers they used to take uh, this pension that need to be get to that people okay if, if there is no proper death certificate if there is no proper account closed is happening okay so because of this here when we are linking this civil registration system with this national population register it will be helpful for easily governance easy governance of so and so schemes so now let us try to see some important details to are given in this article so if you see context it mainly says that our union government is planning to revamp the civil registration system and this system which is enabling a uh, registration of birth and as well as death in real time with a minimal human interventions so when there is minimal human interventions means there will be less chances of corruption right and independent of in it is also very much independent of location as well and according to 2020 to 2021 annual report of union home ministry so annual report of union home ministry says that so they are mainly going to come up with the revamping of the civil registration system of deaths and as well as as well as birth and they are going to connect with this national population registry 
So if you see details, it mainly says that. So this civil registration system, which mainly run by Registrar General of India, and it is mainly going to be linked with this National Population Register. So which is a one of the database of 119 crore residents. And this report says that, so this civil registration system, it is facing some challenges. For example, timelines, efficiency, uniformity, and it's also leading to delayed and under coverage of birth and death. So when we are having this uh, limited or minimal human interventions means that will be helpful for increasing of accountability and as well as transparency as well. Right. So this is about this topic. And here why we need to go for uh, this automated because there were some issues regarding fake birth certificates and as well as fake death certificates. So because of this here there is some registration of the criminal cases also happening. So mainly to decrease this type of uh, cases. So we need to go for automation of this C civil register civil registry system here. So actually this registrar general of India which mainly functions under home ministry and recently we came up with proposing of amendments to this registration of birth and death act of 1969. So this this amendments will be helpful to uh, maintain a database of registered birth and as well as death at the national level. So according to proposed amendments, so the database may be used to update population register, electoral register, Aadhaar cards, ration cards, passports and as well as driving license databases as well. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's prelims questions. So first one it is regarding atmosphere. So the atmosphere is a gaseous envelope which surrounds the earth's surface. Consider the following statements. So first one is rotation of earth which mainly helps the binding of atmosphere to earth's surface. So whenever earth it is rotating means it will be it will be leads to generation of the centrifugal force that is away from the center. So whenever this centrifugal force which is uh, away from center, how can it helpful for the binding of atmosphere? This statement is incorrect. And it sustains the life on earth by not allowing the earth to become too hot or too cold. Yes. And this one is content of water vapor increases from the equator towards poles. So whenever we are seeing, whenever we are moving from this equator to poles, the, uh, this water vapor content will be decreased. So because of this high rainfall that is seen in the equator but not in the poles. So this statement is also incorrect. So here you need to identify correct statements that is two only. And next question is regarding troposphere. Troposphere is being weather layer is the most important layer consider the following statements. So the height of troposphere increases from equator to poles not at all. So at the equator the troposphere is very high than compared to that of poles because of low pressure which is created in this uh, equator region because of high heat. And next one is the heat or the height of troposphere is comparatively more during summer than compared to that of winter years during the summer season there is a high temperature. So because of this expansion of how, uh, air which is very much high compared to in winter season and this one is height of troposphere does not affect it in the by the change of season not at all. So in summer season the height will be height will be more and in the winter season height will be less. So this statement is also incorrect. So correct answer will be again two only. So now let us try to see today's questions. The first one it is regarding clouds. Consider the following statements regarding clouds and second question is regarding insulation. So try to read the statements which are given and give me the correct options in the comment box. So now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So before seeing this today's Hindu, I want to make a small announcement. We are going to come up with a new batch of mains answer writing practice in this first week of May. So for registrations and if you have any queries, please contact us on this number 8074765513 and registrations had been opened so you can join this course. So if you have any queries, please contact us on this number and if you have any, if you want to message me, you can message me on this number in WhatsApp as well. And we are also ready to launch this pen drive course for entire foundational course of 2023. And the cost of this pen drive course is very, very affordable. It is just 60,000 rupees and the validity here is two years. And we are dealing with each and every single and subtopic as well. So we are discussing previous years prelims and as well as means questions also. So this will be very, very beneficial. So try to join this course. They are at most useful and they are very, very updated with the recent current efforts as well. So if you take this entire foundation course either through pen drive or through website, so we provide you one year 
वन ईयर प्रिलिम्स टेस्ट सीरीज एंड एस वेल वन ईयर मेन्स आंसर राइटिंग कोर्स विच इज फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट ओके सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वारीज प्लीज कॉल मी ऑन दिस नंबर एंड दिस इज द राइट टाइम टू जॉइन दिस कोर्स सो नाउ लेट एस ट्राई टू सी टूडेज हिंदू न्यूज पेपर पी डी एफ सो दिस इज टूडेज हिंदू डेट हियर इज अप्रैल ट्वेंटी एट एंड दिस इज डेली एडिशन सो फर्स्ट टॉपिक इट इज स्टेट्स नॉट पासिंग ऑन फ्यूल ड्यूटी कट टू पीपल आई डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक ओके एंड यू हैव टू नो अबाउट वॉट इज अ वैक्ट एंड वॉट इज अ कॉपरेटिव फेडरलिज्म सो इन दिस टॉपिक यू हैव टू रिफर दो टू कॉन्सेप्ट एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट फिक्सेस फाइनल सेडेशन हियरिंग सो सेडेशन इज इज आर्ट दिस इज सेक्शन वन ट्वेंटी फोर ए ऑफ आई पी सी सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट वन द जजमेंट विच इज गिवन बाई सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड हियर यू कैन सी लैंड फिल्ड सो फ्रॉम लैंड फिल्ड देर इज अ फायर विच इज कमिंग अप एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट फायर दैट इज ऑल्सो लीडिंग टू अ स्मोक इन दिस एरिया सो एज यू ऑल नो वेन एवर वी आर गोइंग फॉर डंपिंग इन दिस डंपिंग साइड्स दैट विल लीड्स टू फास्ट डिकम्पोजिशन इन दिस समर सीजन एंड वी कैन सी देर विल बी द गैसेज विच आर वेरी मच हाई एंड दे विल बी इजीली कैचिंग फायर एंड लीव द सिटी पेज दैट इज नथिंग मच इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम दिस पेज टूडे and if you see in this states page i discussed this article regarding this sslv and there are two articles that are important that is archaeology museum in ap to display 400 art craft so here you have to know about some important archaeological sites in andhra pradesh so where they are located and whether they are related to buddhism or jainism you have to know some important facts and next topic is now donkey's milk works up a ladder so this article which mainly talking about one soap which is mainly made up of using donkey's milk as well okay so you can get uh, some question like what are the applications of donkey's milk like that also you can expect question so in this editorial page i discussed regarding the school education so there is one more article regarding the citizens rights and as well duties of public servant so you can also refer this article and regarding this hydrogen i discussed this topic and next article it is regarding social dialogue for safe uh, workers so this article which is mainly talking about occupational safety and health okay so you can go through that because in uh, number of uh, uh, industries for example fire cracker industries so there is increasing of accidents that are mainly seen so here people who are working in this uh, in the soil so industries whenever they are coming across this fire incidents means that will be having some uh, violation of right to life and personal liberty so it is a responsibility of that so and so company to take care of those people who are working in that so and so uh, so and so company or factory so because of this we need to talk about this worker safety you can easily understand this topic and if you move forward in this text and context i discussed about this palm oil exports of indonesia and if you move further you, there is also one important article in this text and context is important that is child and adolescent healthcare systems so you can easily understand that recently lancet report uh, which mainly says that there are about 8.6 million deaths which mainly occurred in children and adolescents as per 2019 data so you have to know about what are the reasons and how uh, huge inequalities are present in this system that is affecting the life of children and adolescent you have to think in this point and regarding this uh, civil registration system i discussed this topic and next one is our ministry it is going to release a report of employment survey so once it is uh, released we are going to discuss this topic in the tomorrow's lecture and next one is plan for 4g update in this left wing extremism areas so here this article is very important from your gs paper 3 point of view regarding security because especially in red corridor areas we are facing this left wing extremism so mainly when we want to remove this left wing extremism so we need to focus on education we need to focus on development in that area so whenever we are providing proper internet services there that will be helpful for development so in this way here we can address this challenge of left wing extremism and if you see next topic it is regarding prime minister to undertake three nation tour so our prime minister is going to visit germany denmark and france you have to see the locations of these countries okay in europe and even you have to know about what will be the some new agreements new mvos that will be signed by india and those countries and after this visit so we will be getting detailed analysis so we are going to discuss them after that visit and next one is jammu and kashmir hydro power electricity project which mainly upload so it is about quar hydro electric power project and you have to remember that project is on river chenab okay and next one is 
एच ए एल हिंदुस्तान एरोनॉटिक्स लिमिटेड बिगिनस एयर फ्रेम फेटिक टेस्ट ऑन लाइट कम्बैट एयरक्राफ्ट सो वी डिस्कस अ नंबर ऑफ फैक्ट्स रिगार्डिंग दिस तीज आ स्टेज इट इज लाइट कम्बैट एयरक्राफ्ट अगेन यू हैव टू रिवाइज द टॉपिक वंस अगेन एंड नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज रशिया स्टॉप ग्लास सप्लाई टू टू नेटो नेशन दे आर द फर्स्ट वन ईज ओके हियर वॉट हैव एन रशिया विच मेनली कर दिस नेचुरल गैस टू नेटो मेम्बर्स दट इज अ पोलैंड एंड बल्गेरिया so you have to see the location of this poland and as well as bulgaria where it is located and which are the country sharing boundary as well okay and here there are number of uh, other countries are also having fear like so what if this russia stops this gas supply because most of this european countries energy security which is depend on this russia's gas and next topic it is regarding china reports first human case of h3n8 bird flu so this is very important from your science and technology point of view and next topic it is regarding center enhance a subsidy on non urea fertilizer so you have to see this topic so these are the some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathore science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much